today we're live from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to meet with Simone Bianco at the Altos Labs to hear about his Isnav story. Let's go. I'm driving to Altos Labs in the Silicon Valley to meet with Simone. Seems to be like a secret location, so I'm not supposed to say where it is. I'm very curious. Ciao Barbara. Barbara, thank you for inviting us. Welcome to Altus. So, so these are the famous Altus labs? Yes, yes, this is one of our buildings. Bianco is principal investigator and director of uh, the uh, computational biology here at Altos Lab, where he and his colleagues are working toward the ambitious goal of uh, reversing disease and uh, aging processes. Simone, we want to hear all about it, but uh, we also want to hear about you and your ISNAV stories. Thank you and welcome to Altos. I grew up uh, in Taranto in Italy, then I moved to Pisa where I got my master in physics. When did you move to North America and why? I moved to the United States in 2004. Um, after I finished my master, I won a PhD scholarship at the University of North Texas, where I was working with an Italian physicist, actually, who had recruited me from uh, the University from Italy. Tell us about the Altos Labs. Altos Labs is a very exciting place. I got to Altos especially because of its mission to uh, reverse disease, uh, to this process of cellular programming rejuvenation. What we're interested in is to try and understand how cells react to stress and injury so that we can maintain their health for longer. And we hope that that will result in uh, humans living healthier. We're not too interested necessarily in humans living longer, um, but I think we would be very successful if we um, got to the point that we will live healthier. In Altos, I'm a principal investigator, meaning that I have a group of people that further a certain research topic. In my case, is computational synthetic biology. We try to understand how to rejuvenate cells by looking at them from a more theoretical perspective, how they work, and we try to design computational algorithms. You can think about artificial intelligence, for example, to understand how to design cells that are healthier. Can you explain a little bit how you actually can change the cells? One of the founding works for Altos is um, a work uh, that Shinya Yamanaka uh, performed um, in the uh, early 2000s until he won his Nobel Prize in 2012 in medicine. And he showed that by expressing specific um, uh, chemicals inside the cells called transcription factors, you can rejuvenate any cell so that it becomes a, a stem cell, again, a pluripotent stem cell. Uh, these pluripotent stem cells can become then any other cell in your body. So in principle, you can take a cell from your skin, uh, rejuvenate it all the way to a stem cell, and then it become any other cell, like liver. In Altos, we want to control that process uh, so that um, we can rejuvenate cells. We can take cells and make them become stronger against injury. Rejuvenate, you know, our skin and <laughs> make look younger. I read the, uh, that the executives behind Altos Lab would really, really like uh, us to stop saying that they are trying to reverse aging. Aging is not a disease. Um, aging is a correlate to a lot of diseases. Um, like Alzheimer, for example, or frontotemporal dementia, or, you know, uh, joint pain that we all get. I think we want to maintain the health 
of our organism, our body, our tissues longer. One effect that that might have uh, is to maybe slow down the process of aging. Um, but I don't think um, our objective should be to reverse aging. Um, our objective should be, should, should be to cure disease. How close are we actually to the, uh, to the uh, treatment on, on people? This science does not exist yet. So first we want to understand the science of cellular reprogramming and rejuvenation before we get to the point to go into humans with the medicine. But one thing that I can say is that the promise of this science is really high. You have worked and published in, in many fields of research, including theoretical physics, um, epidemiology, virology, biology, neuroscience, financial mathematics, and artificial intelligence. In order to have an impact, you need to have a multidisciplinary view of a field. It was always fun, but the idea behind it was that I, was, I wanted to have a big impact. Altos is not different. Uh, we want to change the way we do medicine. We want to change uh, medicine as well. Um, and so I think we need to work to look at problems in, uh, from different perspectives, which will bring me to um, develop a new AI algorithm. I like to think of uh, artificial intelligence as probably the best tool we have now to extract insight from data, together with new capabilities of collecting data. For example, now we can measure uh, gene activity, we can see the motion of proteins inside the cell. Uh, we can correlate all these things together. And these are uh, way too much for any single investigator or team to be able to sift through to get any sort of good uh, or important information. AI can do that. It's extremely good at extracting patterns. It's not magic, although ChatGPT has brought us to think it might be magic. It's not magic. It extracts patterns from a humongous amount of data for us to then use to make uh, uh, maybe predictions or to extract new insight. I feel AI is uh, or it will be the most important tool for biologists, even if biologists don't know that yet. So you're also an inventor. You have several patents, and we have uh, one here. Yes. Uh, yes, I am an inventor. That was my, actually my first patent. It is about a new polymer that, when combined with an antibiotic, has an extraordinary ability to kill bacteria. It can be used for uh, combination therapy, multistrain resistant bacteria, which are usually those that in people, people that become resistant to other more common uh, antibiotics. There's a, a lot that one learns uh, by, uh, from writing patents. How do you actually apply your work? Especially somebody like me who's a theoretical physicist, right? How do you apply your work so that it solves a real world problem? Patents have the answer to that, right? So it's the application of that to a real world problem. And to conclude, let's talk about Italy. I love Italy, of course. I don't remember who, but somebody said you can take Italians out of Italy, but not Italy out of Italians, of course. I do feel like a tourist for a little while. Then I feel I'm back again. But the first two weeks, I feel like I'm in a completely new world where everybody treats me nice, things are cheap, and the food is delicious. Thank you, Simone, for telling us your Isna story. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for Thank me you. to have you here. Thank you.